fountain emerge. Beasts of the wild come rejoice. Nourish, renew, let our praises converge. worship God. Come, let us worship God. Come, let us worship God. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, everyone. To the love of God. To the love of God. God's peace be with you. Welcome to our online service for Sunday, September 5th. This, barring any spike in COVID numbers, will be our last pre-recorded service. Beginning next week, September 12th, we will be resuming in-person services with, the, with following health protocols at all times. These services will be live streamed to our Facebook page. It will also be recorded and uploaded later in the day on our YouTube channel and our Instagram page. Our service this morning begins with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. 
through Jesus, the bread of life. You are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I invite you to hold the prayer of the day within your heart. God of mercy. We no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has become the Lord of life. Increase in our minds and hearts the risen life we share with Christ. And help us to grow as your people toward the fullness of eternal life with you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The reading for today is from Romans 6, verses 1 through 10. What then are we to say? Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized in Christ Jesus was baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that Jesus as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we may too walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin, but if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. The word of the Lord. How dear to me is your dwelling, O Lord of hosts. My soul has a desire and longing for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home, and the swallow a nest, where she may lay her young. By the side of your altars, O Lord of hosts, and my King and my God. Happy are they who dwell in your house, they will always be praising you. Happy are the people whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on the pilgrim's way. Those who go through the balsam valley will find it a place of springs, for the early rains have covered it with pools of water. They will climb from height to height, and the God of gods will be seen in Zion. Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Behold our defender, O God, and look upon the face of your anointed. For one day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather stand at the threshold of the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is both sun and shield, bestowing grace and glory. No good thing will the Lord withhold from those who walk with integrity. 
Oh, Lord of hosts, happy are they who put their trust in you. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 28th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. For he has been raised as he said. Come, see where, the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and with great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the word of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So last spring, we had to buy a new solar blanket for our pool. After doing a bit of research, we settled on a heavy, clear blanket to replace the faded blue one that disintegrated last year. Since it's clear, the blanket acts like a magnifying glass when the sun hits it. This summer, the water has been much warmer, and in theory, we'll be able to use the pool a couple of weeks longer than usual. But we've noticed a slight downside. Because the war water is warmer, algae seems to grow faster and is more stubborn than in the past. Plus, we now have two leopard frogs that seem to have taken up residence in the deep end, right under the diving board. Normally, they would have remained near the retention pond at the back of our property, but the pool, it seems, must have been too inviting. I know, I know. Pastors and their problems. By going to a different blanket, we've changed the ecosystem of the pool. The warmer water has made it more suitable for the pair of frogs and allowed them to migrate from the dangers of the snakes and snapping turtles at the pond and spend their days catching sun on the pool's blanket. The audience for Paul's letter is wrestling with the same question that still plagues some of us today. Can we continue to live in sin because we have received grace through Jesus' death and resurrection? Earlier in this letter, Paul said that where sin increases, grace abounds all the more. Apparently, Paul is concerned that some people would believe that the more sin there is, the more grace would be present, so they should sin. Based on what Paul had said, this seems like a logical conclusion. But, Paul, but in today's passage, Paul tells the listeners that such logic 
is wrong-headed. Because through baptism, the world of sin is dead. In writing to the Roman congregations, Paul tells the people that baptism provides an opportunity to live in a different ecosystem and to change the world for the better to one that isn't governed by a society that oppresses and victimizes, but change it to one that loves. So then, in essence, baptism is all about source and location. Because when we stand in grace, we stand in a different place, a place apart from sin. In her writings on today's passage from Paul's letter, scholar L. N. Jarvis wrote, Christ's death created an alternative world, a world where sin does not rule. It is into this alternative world that baptism gives entrance, for baptism is into Christ's death. She goes on to say, we have been translated into a new environment where not only is sin a foreign entity, but where everything is new. An environment where everything is new. Through baptism, Paul says, we are baptized into Christ Jesus. We're, bapti we're baptized into his death. Therefore, we've been buried with him, by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so too might we walk in the newness of life. Through baptism, we are joined to Christ. Through baptism, the old world is washed away, and we find ourselves somewhere else with a different set of expectations for our lives. Baptism isn't a one-and-done action. It is an ongoing process into which the baptized now love and live. This is grace, liberating grace, that we are called to share through our life-affirming, life-giving, world-changing words and actions. By joining Christ through baptism, we are placed in a new ecosystem. It is an environment where love is fostered, where we work to raise up the weak and suffering rather than leaving them to their own devices. It is an environment where grace can be given full flight. The sixth chapter of Romans show, depicts the power we have in our everyday life to live in ways that are faithful to God. This is the message of baptism that Paul proclaims today. That through baptism we are united to Christ. And if we are united to Christ, then what is true of him must surely be true of us. Next Sunday, we will be welcoming a new member into the community of believers through baptism when we return to in-person services. It seems like an ideal moment to welcome a new member because the pandemic has meant that congregations are entering a new phase in their lives. The old ways, the old practices have been washed away and because they have new life, new ministries, new perspectives, new voices are all now possible. It is, as Bishop Mike has called it, a liminal time. A time when we stand at a threshold, a time when we, step, we can step forward into uncertain ground and step into a new life filled with possibilities. A time when we stand in grace no matter what, a time when we can actually and wholeheartedly live into our baptized life. Amen.
our service continues with the prayers of intercession. May children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Holy One, you bring your people together in worship. Enliven your church. Guide all evangelists, preachers, prophets, and missionaries who seek to share your love through word and deed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You provide water for thirsty ground and sunshine to feed hungry plants. Bless all who advocate for healthy forests, unpolluted air, and clean waterways. Inspire all people to show care for the world you have made. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You show no partiality. Increase justice in all nations. Encourage leaders and governments to work with one another for the good of our common world. Especially as we celebrate Labor Day, unite us in seeking the health, safety, and dignity of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You accompany those who are most in need. Shelter all those fleeing from violence and persecution. Protect any who are in danger and sustain them through uncertain and unstable times. Today we pray especially for Mary, Susan, Laura, Karen, Peter, Tyson, Glenn, Jake, Linda, Klaus, Joyce, Roseanne, Audrey, Helen, as well as all those we name before you, either silently or out loud. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You support the work of your disciples. Continue to nurture the leadership and ministries of this congregation, especially Lutheran outreach ministries and Lutheran social services. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You embrace all who have died in faith and brought them into your glorious presence. We thank you for their example and rejoice in their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As we have since the pandemic has made its presence known within the congregations, we share a sign of peace using sign language. So if you place your hands like this and then slide them as if you're in prayer, then you sweep out and then you bring them back so your thumbs are touching and open palms. And the response is with your pinky and your thumb out. So it is peace be with you and also with you. Let us share a sign of peace with one another.
hands, peace that will unite the earth, peace that will make for my enemies friends, peace that offers new birth, peace be with you, peace be with you. Because we belong to God, we are bold to pray in the words our Savior taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now receive into your hearts and into your lives the blessings of our Lord. The blessing of God who provides for us and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God. My soul cries out with a joyful shout that the God of my heart is great. And my spirit sings of the wondrous things that you bring to the ones who wait. You fixed your sight on your servant's plight, and my weakness you did not spurn. So from east to west shall my name be blessed, could the world be about to turn. My heart shall sing of the day you bring, let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. Though I am small, my God, my all, you work great things in me. And your mercy will last from the depths of the past to the end of the age to be. Your very name puts the proud to shame and to those who would for you yearn. You will show your might, put the strong to flight, for the world is about to turn. My heart shall sing of the day you bring let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. From the halls of power to the fortress tower, not a stone will be left on stone. 
Let the king beware for your justice tears every tyrant from his throne. The hungry poor shall weep no more for the food they can never earn. There are tables spread, every mouth be fed, for the world is about to turn. My heart shall sing of the day you bring, let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. The nations rage from age to age. We remember who holds us fast. God's mercy must deliver us from the conqueror's crushing grasp. This saving word that our forebears heard is the promise which holds us bound. Till the spear and rod can be crushed by God who is turning the world around. My heart shall sing of the day you bring, let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears for the dawn draws near and the world is about to turn.